So in this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to build responsive templates using the layouts feature that we introduced in Cavalry 1.5. As you can see, we've got a couple of things going on here. We've got the logo and the word mark, and you can see that they're swapping as the width narrows. And likewise, we've got this call out at the bottom. As you can see there, the text is actually resizing dependent on the width and everything is being constrained to the edges of the composition. So let's just walk through how to set this up from the beginning. So let's start with a fresh scene. We have the logo in here and then we have our, our background has been set to this green color. And we need the two text elements to add. So the first one I'm going to add is the word mark. And for that, I'm just going to hold Option or Alt and click the text tool. Let's set the font to, we're using a font called Merriweather, and then let's set the color to black. For the call out itself, let's click the text tool and then click and drag out a text box. And we wanted to create responsive layouts. And again, let's go Merriweather. This time let's set to white. So all of our elements are now in the scene. Let's make sure we label our layers. So this is our mark. And this is our call out. And now we need to add the layout itself. So the way we're going to do this is we can click the plus button here. The shortcut for that is command or control full stop. And if we search for layout group, we can then double click and that will add one to the group. Now by default, uh, a layout's direction is set to horizontal, which is what we need in this case. And then to add shapes to the layout, all we need to do is drag them in. So I'm going to hold command or control to select both of these and then drag them in. And you can see they're now in the layout. Now in this case, we've got them the wrong way around. Uh, that's very easy. We just need to swap the direction here. As you can see, they're now in the right way. Let's just turn this off for now. Now, nothing has actually happened at this point. And that's because layouts start from the center and work out from there. And what we need to do to force these to the edges of the comp is add a spacer in between. So I can search for spacer, double click, and again, I'm going to drag this. If I drag this into the top here, you'll see that both of them get pushed to that side. For this example, we want this into the middle, and this will push them both across. And the reason for this is because by default, the layout's maximum size is connected to the composition's resolution and therefore these are now being pushed to either side. So the spacer is occupying all the, the available space outside of the shapes there as well. So that's our first one done. And now, as you can see, as we change our resolution, they're moving with it. Right, so let's do something similar to the bottom. So for that, we're gonna select our call out. But this time, rather than using the quick add window, we're gonna go up to the shelf and we've got the layout options here. We're gonna choose horizontal. Great, so that's now in. And again, as you can see, this is just in the middle. Nothing's happening. We need another spacer. So let's add a spacer. And we'll just drag this and we want this to be at the bottom. As you can see, that's now on that side. And if we move this, they're all lining up. Now, something we need to do at this point um, that will become apparent later on is we don't want these layouts to be dictated by the height of the comp itself. So let's disconnect this connection. We do want the width, so we can bring that back in. But then let's just set this. We can just pick any arbitrary value for now. It'll become clear later on. And we'll do the same on this one. So make that connection into there, and we'll just drop this down a little bit. And what we'll notice is that on both of these, we are bang in the middle. So we can change that. If we double click the logo and go to the advanced tab, you can see that we've got some vertical alignment options here for the layout. So for this, we want top. And for the mark, we also want top. And for the call out, we want to go bottom. Now, what you'll notice is that these are, again, not quite where we expect them to be, but that's fine for now. So what we can do next is we can select our two layout groups and we want to put these into another layout group, in this case, a vertical layout group. So we're going to the shelf, 
and we'll click the layout group there. As you can see, they are now positioning themselves in the correct place. So the next thing we want to do is start to add some margins into this. We don't really want everything touching the edges. So if I double click this layout group, you see we've got this margins attribute here. I'm going to set the left to 50 and the right to 50 on that one. These are the horizontals and the same on this one. And then for the vertical, we'll do top and bottom instead. Right, so they're in a slightly nicer position now. Now what you notice is that as we pull this to a narrow width, the Cavalry word mark is clashing with the logo itself, and also this text is not updating. So let's start at the top here to fix this. Layout groups can be horizontal or vertical, and so we can create a switch that flips these. You can see this is a bit wrong at the moment, but we'll, we'll correct that. There are several ways to create switches in Cavalry, but for this example, I'm going to use a JS Math. So double click. And the way that JS Math works is that you can enter variables into here. So N0 is reading this number here. So we're going to use the comps width. So we're going to make a connection to that. And we're going to write what's called an if statement. So the way you can do that with JS Math, or one of the ways, is we can go N0. So in this case, if the comps width is less than, let's go 700, then output 1. Or if it's not, output 0. Now the reason we're using a 1 and a 0 is because drop-downs in Cavalry also have numbers associated with them. So while this says horizontal, this is actually related to a number 0 and this is related to a number 1. So if we make this connection from the JS math into the direction attribute, you can see that as we reduce our comp's width, that is flipping. Now the reason this is so wrong is because our height's quite wrong here. So we can now, now we've got this, we can pull this into a position that we like. And what we'll also notice is that we've kind of bumped into the middle of the comp. And we don't want that. So let's have the logo, let's set, set this to leading and the same with the mark itself. Right, so that top section's looking good now. Let's focus on the call out at the bottom here. So if I double click, holding Option, Alt, we'll load that into the attribute editor. Now we have an attribute called shrink to fit text box. So I'm gonna check that. And I'm actually gonna uncheck allow word breaks because I don't want this for the, this example. I'm just gonna increase the font size a little bit. We can come back and change this. And what we need to do is, as you can see, we've got a text box here. If I select the text shape, you can see this is the text box. And as we change this, the, te the text actually change its uh, font size, it gets scaled. And so we can use the composition's width to drive that. So let's connect that in there. So as we now move this up and down, you'll see that the text is changing. Now that's nearly right, but the problem is we need to account for our margin. So we've got a margin of 50 here and 50 on this side, but obviously we've just got a di direct relationship between the width and the text box size. So whenever you've got an input on an attribute, you can add an expression. So in this case, we're going to go minus 100, our 250s. And now when we go up and down, you can see that this is working nicely. Now we can take that a little bit further. As you can see, I don't really want this to be dropping into, into these two words and then one. So I'm going to update my expression here. And you can actually use a clamp. So I'm going to write clamp and then a bracket. And I'm going to say, right, you can never go below zero. The way to reference the number in this kind of expression is with a value. So the value is the width of the comp. So that's kind of our same expression. But we're going to say never go more than 700. And hit return. As you can see, that's now updated. And that will just hold that in place. So it will only really update when we get to there. So that's it. You can take this further. You could start putting in rules that hide the uh, icon up here, the logo, all sorts of different things that you can do. But hopefully that gives you the basics on setting up your first layout.